Methyl alcohol, or methanol, is toxic and is produced in small amounts by fermentation. It can be concentrated by distillation and so is a concern for distillers. It's not all that toxic with a minimum lethal dose of about 30 mils for an adult and the lethal dose ranges from 30 to about 250 mils. Most cases of methanol poisoning in the Western world are from ingesting widely available products that use methanol like car windshield washer fluid or methylated spirits. But outbreaks of multiple poisonings continue to occur in the developing world due to poor distillation practices. Methanol is less intoxicating than ethanol. It is not toxic per se, but is converted in the liver into formaldehyde and then to formic acid, which poisons the system that uses glucose and oxygen to convert energy called aerobic respiration. That forces tissues to fall back on anaerobic respiration, which produces far less energy. This particularly affects high-energy glucose-dependent tissues like the brain and eyes. Anaerobic respiration also produces lactic acid as a byproduct, and it is this rather than the formic acid itself that leads to the high blood acidity found in methanol poisoning. Treatment of poisoning is effective and it involves blocking the enzyme pathway that converts methanol into formic acid. One agent that does this is ethanol as it competes with methanol for metabolism by the same enzymes. Methanol metabolism is quite slow, slower than ethanol, so after initial exposure, someone can be quite well and only become seriously ill after several hours. Those hours also give doctors the opportunity to intervene so that good medical care drastically improves the prospect of a good recovery, which leads to a simple message. If you suspect it's occurred, even if the victim seems well, seek medical advice urgently. Methanol is a product of fermentation and the amount produced varies with two things. What is being fermented and the fermenting organism. Pectins are polysaccharide molecules that form the cell walls and extracellular matrix of fruit and are responsible for its structural firmness. Methanol is one of the components of pectins. As fruit ripens and becomes softer, pectins break down, releasing methanol, and fermentation by some organisms has a similar effect. The highest concentrations are found in citrus fruits like oranges and grapefruits, but pectins are also present in significant amounts in other fruits like grapes, apples, pears and cherries. Aside from pectins, many microorganisms produce methanol during their anaerobic respiration, and most cases of drink-related methanol poisoning occur with traditionally fermented drinks where the fermenting organisms are not specifically reared for the purpose, but rather mixed microbes inoculated from the natural environment. Wash produced at home in the Western world, observing reasonable hygiene measures and using commercially available yeasts intended for the purpose and fermenting pectin-free sugar preparations like cane sugar, do not contain significant levels of methanol. You do have to be careful with large pot distilled batches fermented from fruit. For example, it takes about 20 kilograms of apples to make 30 mils of methanol. In any event, there is no excuse for complacency at the still, partly because it takes only one instance of poisoning to ruin a life, but also because the process of avoiding methanol also avoids other volatile, nasty-tasting contaminants. Methanol does not have a particularly pungent smell or taste, unlike acetone, which is used as nail varnish remover and is also a toxic product of fermentation with a similar minimum lethal dose to methanol. It, however, has a highly characteristic smell and taste, making it easy to detect, even in small quantities, but this is just not true of methanol, which is one reason why it's more dangerous. Drink-related methanol poisoning events are, without exception, associated with distillation. They do not occur with beer or wine, and neither do they occur with jacking or freeze distillation. The freezing point of methanol is minus 97.6 degrees centigrade. The freezing point of ethanol is lower at minus 114 degrees. The jacking process does concentrate both methanol and ethanol in the jacked drink, but it slightly favours ethanol. And more importantly, it gives a fairly even ratio of ethanol to methanol throughout the jack, rather than having some parts of the jack being particularly rich in methanol. 
The methanol is still there, though, and causes the bad hangover called apple paralysis. The boiling point of ethanol is around 78.4 degrees centigrade, whereas that of methanol is lower at 64.7 degrees. With batch distillation, you start with a boiler full of cold wash. You steadily raise the temperature, and as you do so, the partial pressures of gases above the wash changes from mostly air when it's cold to purely vapour. Because of its higher volatility, methanol will have a higher proportion compared to ethanol in the vapour than in the wash, and its level in the wash falls faster as the run progresses. This means that batch distillation concentrates methanol at the very first stage of vapour production, and therein lies the danger. It is the potential for distillation to concentrate methanol in that way that leads to poisoning, and that's why we throw away the first 1 or 2% of a run. It is not true that those 1 or 2% contain all the methanol in the wash. It's just that it's only there that it's concentrated to dangerous levels. It would still be desirable to get rid of it altogether. It doesn't have much taste, but it does give a nasty hangover, even in subtoxic doses. This problem does not arise in continuous distillation, because the wash is added continuously, and therefore its methanol content is spread continuously throughout the run, so no particular part of the run concentrates it to dangerous levels. There is still a methanol risk that has to be managed. If a continuous still runs at too low a temperature, it will produce little product, with concentrated methanol, so temperature control and output volume monitoring are safety critical issues in continuous distillation. Methanol risk management is not difficult, it's really just a question of awareness. In the next video I will turn to the other main risk of home distillation, fire.